Welcome. We're here in Gurame, Cappadocia today to talk about how to buy Turkish carpets. Turkish rugs, carpets, so these things. Most people don't have a clue what they're doing and today we're going to introduce you to an expert and we're going to teach you everything you need to know about buying a Turkish carpet. So come on inside and let's see what we can learn. As we begin this, let's see if we can give you a quick introduction. When you're buying a, car a Turkish carpet, you really are looking for 10 different features or characteristics to be aware of that will help you make your decision. First, size. You should probably measure before you come to Turkey. That would be ideal. But do you want a carpet that's just going to fit under your coffee table? Do you want to fill a room? Or maybe for a corridor? What are you gonna, where are you going to put it in your house and how big does it need to be? That's important to know. Bigger, of course, generally is going to make a difference in price, but not necessarily depending on the other characteristics. Second, of course, is price. Most people are going to really care about this. Price, I would say just be ready. Carpets are works of art. They're expensive. Uh, $1,000, $2,000, $10,000, $50,000. You'll find carpets at all these different prices, but a cheap $100 carpet, you're probably not going to find that it's going to have any kind of quality that's going to last. Age. The older it is, the more valuable it is. That's basic, just like any antique. Colors. Are they going to be natural dyes or do they use chemical dyes? That will determine how it's going to age and what it will look like in 10, 20, 30, 50 years. Also, it will, of course, determine the price. If somebody took the time to make natural dyes to put into this carpet, that's important to know. And it, if you can uh, understand that, you will make better decisions about the carpet you get. Next would be motif or design, the pattern on the carpet. Is it medallion where there's a big centerpiece? Is it have individual characters or shapes that give meaning? Is it uh, geometrical or is it floral where it's more flower, pa flower patterns? How many different colors are being used? This is important in determining the, the meaning and the story behind the carpet for those who are thinking about it more than just, oh, this one looks good. There, there's much more to it for the person that was making it, especially if it came from, from a person, a woman that was making it at home rather than in a factory where she was given things to do. The materials they use, there's wool, there's cotton, there's silk. Wool on wool, wool on cotton, silk on silk, silk on cotton, these are all gonna be there. Silk's gonna be most valuable, wool's most popular. Most of the carpets you see are gonna have wool in them, some wool on wool, some wool on cotton. This will determine the value and the quality of the carpet. Uh, also the type. The, is it a jijim, kilim, hala, uh, sumak, kolchan? All these are types you'll have to learn about. There's basic weave, kilim, and there's with the pile, the, the carpet or the hala. There's the sumak, which is sort of a mix of those and has some embroidery. There's the jijim, which is something that's made for the sweetheart time, as you'll learn in the video. These are all important things to understand. The uh, handmade, this is another important feature. Is it handmade? Sometimes it's hard to tell. One hint to help you understand is look at the corners. If their corners are exactly perfectly all the same, it probably is not handmade. Handmade, they'll have some mistakes. They'll have some defects. This is a good thing because it proves that it's handmade and it adds value to the carpet, interestingly enough. Also the region. Different regions have different styles, different colors they use, and that's important to understand. If you want it from a certain region, or if you don't want it from a certain region, it's important to understand what they look like, where they come from, and how they're made. Lastly, what you're buying is more than just a carpet. You're buying a history, a culture, a work of art, and this is an investment you're making. Take the time to buy something that really will gain value over time. Trust me, you'll be happy you did as will your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren. We're going to go through this maze to finally get to the main room where we're going to meet Serkan, who's going to teach us what we need to know. We 
We're here today with CaptivatingCappadocia.com. We're here at Ikman Gallery with Serkan. Yes. And he's going to teach us everything we need to know about Turkish carpets in just a few minutes. I'm just kidding. You didn't need a few years. <laughs> but he's going to teach us as much as he can today. So That's thank you, Serkan. That's my pleasure. I'm very nice. uh, but one thing I have to decide is do I want Kalim, Hala? So, so like, that's what, what our work. That's our work. So this is a Kalim. The name of the, the workmanship. It's a technicus, which is the basic technique what we call flat weaving, in and out technique on the looms. So, typically from Anatolian workmanship, you can find the different sizes, different colors, and uh, of course, different patterns. So, you can use this kilim, this workmanship, both of size. Even front of the kilim, hmm. it looks the same. Mm. So, because of in and out technique, mm -hmm. this is the one of the easy workmanship. Mm -hmm. So, this is something semi old, what we call it's around 45 50 years old kilim. Huh. It's again from central Cappadocian. So, another technique, again from Anatolian. First, she make a same technique as like a kilim, which is flat weaving. After, top of the kilim, extra wrapping. So what we call the name of the this technique, jijim. Jijim means, in Turkish, especially in Anatolia, sweet heart, sweet pea, hmm. sweetie. Mm -hmm. So when is the young men and women when they're getting married mm -hmm. first one month two months what we call jijim ayah uh -huh. which is jijim mount the sweet height sweet so height people mount. which is <coughs> who's getting married they talking each other very sweetly mm. so they learning each other because of that the ladies they make a, this kind of things when they are engagement time ah. My wife and I have been married 19 years, and we're still in the jijim phase. Voila. You are one of the lucky persons. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, is this a two-sided as well? No, only one side. Only one. Use. Because of extra wrapping, so it makes a very different looks from the back side. Oh, uh, yeah. So you can use only one side. Okay. So mostly these kind of pieces, the people are buying for hanging or hmm. top of the table, something more accessory things. Ah, okay. The weaving of these two, mm -hmm. is it significantly different? It, it is. Flat weaving and this is extra wrapping. Two think. times work. Ah, okay. But kill them, just flat weaving, which okay. is basic technique. Okay. So every weaving type, they have to know first kill them. It's starting from the kill hmm, interesting. After they make a more difference, which is jijim or sumac or mm -hmm. carpets. It's going to be more professional. So this is what we call Kochan, name of the tribe. Mm -hmm. It's come from eastern part of Anatolia. Again, very similar, the workmanship. It's come from same family work, mm -hmm. which is kilim. And again, extra wrapping technique. Mm -hmm. But this is, what is this again? Kochan. Kochan. The name that, of the tribe. But what's the type of carpet? This is a jijim or this is? It's kind of jijim, but this is more Anatolian work, central Anatolian work. Uh -huh. This is more eastern part of Anatolia. It's more uh -huh. Kurdish side. Okay. So and do these they things like have meaning? We use more animal pattern. Mm. Uh -huh. So it's come from, they believe, more Noah's Ark. Mm -hmm. So because of that, they like to be used more ah, animals. something animals inside <coughs> on the what they have a workmanship. Ah, okay. So we understand more, which is Kurdish things or more Anatolian things. Lots of colors too. It is, they like more colorful. So this is another technique, 
which is the one of the, the highest quality, the sumac. Again, first she make a flat weave, top of the flat weave after extra wrapping, embroidery. So this is more hardest technique and more detail and more concentrate. So all these four pieces, all made by pure wool. Hmm. This is also sumac. Of course, different region. Same technique, same workmanship. Very similar quality, but different patterns. And of course, different families making. Where is this one? Do you know where this one's from? It's again from Kurdish side. The sumac workmanship, mostly the Kurdish families. Okay. They do much nicer, to be honest, on this, this technique. Anatolians do sumac, but it's not so good? Or? They do, but not this much finer. Yeah. Sometimes, unusually, we found it. This is typical Anatolian, which is Cappadocian carpet. Mm -hmm. It's a typical medallion pattern on the middle, very nice saffron color, pure wool, mm -hmm. something maybe 40, 45 years old, wedding carpet. So these two piles, again Jijim, maybe you remember the sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So another, this four pile is a sumac. Most of them from eastern part of Turkey, mm -hmm. or Kurdish side. Uh -huh. This three pile is a, again Anatolian from central Cappadocian. Okay. So we have the, under the this kilim. It's a more big size. Hmm. It's Kurdish, which is sumac, mm -hmm. and some small ones okay. over here. Again, sumac technique. <laughs> Same time on the kilims, they use a prayer map pattern. When you look only this part, this it's a handing hips, what mm -hmm. we call. Hips, yeah. It's a Anatolian goddess. The meaning of that, the Anatolia is the meaning of the pregnant lady. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ana means mother. Mm -hmm. Tolia means full. Full mother. Ana dolu. Ana dolu. Yeah. So it's meaning baby, the arms, uh -huh. which is fertility pattern. Uh -huh. So one of the oldest uh, technique of the connection people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So same time, if you looking from this angle. It looks like a tulip. The tulip is very important flowers from Islamic belief. Mm -hmm. Some these ones what we call omelet. Turkish like amulet. Food, yeah, Turkish we call muska. The people mm. believing that like a charm. These are the one of the common uh, patterns. Wow. Mostly you can see Anatolian Kilims carpets. Mm -hmm. hmm. Is there any significant to the <clears throat> significant significance to the design? Actually, it's something flowers middle of the medallion. What we call for these ones candle. So in Islamic countries, every mosque have a, some oil lamp, mm -hmm. what we call candle for that things. So these are very important symbolizing of the the mosque, mm -hmm. which is the front of the mihrab. Mm -hmm. So something, these rods, what we call water rod, and next to water, which is tree, oh, right. or something flowers. Mm -hmm. So it's meaning of where is the water, there is the life. Mm -hmm. If there's no water, no life. Hmm. Something very simple pattern. 
So it looks like a coronation, actually, mm -hmm. the pattern. So it depends to people. How mm -hmm. you look, you're going to read it the carpet that way. There. Now, can you look at this and know, like, actually what specific area it came from? It's come from uh, Western Cappadocia, from Aksaray area. Okay. So we can understand from the workmanship, of course, pattern, of course, colors. All mm -hmm. it makes a, the, where come from? Mm -hmm. It's come from Ushak, the name of the pattern. So this is m more new production. Ushak, uh, the town Ushak. Yeah, mm -hmm. the name of the town, which is again Western Anatolia. So this pattern, it's come from Ottoman. All the Ottoman palaces, they was using this kind of carpet and this kind of patterns. Mm. So people call right now for this kind of patterns, Ottoman pattern. Mm. Again, flower, more big items, not really symmetrical, but mostly this kind of carpets are more huge size. Mm. Like 10 by 14, 14 by 18, sometimes much bigger. Meters. Like, yeah. You can find it easy. For Sarai's. Yeah, it's quite big, like 40 square meters, 50 square meters. People make uh, this kind of carpets. So it was that time, it's a meaning, it's quite strong carpet. Mm -hmm. To be making that much big, it mm -hmm. makes a long time yeah. to weaving. So it was that time, four years, five years, weaving. Four or five years. Weaving time. To make a carpet. So four years, five years waiting in the looms, it means it's quite strong carpet. So can you imagine how long they're going to be used? Mm -hmm. Is this 40 or 50 years old? Or how no, long? no, this is quite new. Okay. New production. So it's another carpets, which is from Persian. The name of the region is from Naim. So this is very fine work. Naim in Iran? Yeah. So the materials, top of the cotton, wool and silk. Some part they use a silk, very small details, but rest is wool, which is 80% wool, approximately, 10% silk, mm -hmm. the other 10%, which is the fringe, mm -hmm. is cotton. Mm -hmm. So if you close to look, the back side, you can see the how fine work from the back side, mm -hmm. which is the number of nuts per centimeter carré. Mm -hmm. It's very high. So you're going to calculate it. How you know or how you understanding it's same things from to technological camera, which is the megapixel. Uh -huh. Same things. Yep. Same mentality. This has more megapixels than yeah. it. Yeah. This is 6 megapixel. Yeah. This is 16 megapixel. Yeah. The the color tells you just from even not even seeing the carpet, the color tells you where it's from. If you see on these. the carpets only dark red and dark blue, most of them, not 100%, it's come from more Middle East, which is Afghani, Turkmens, some Uzbeki. You know, maybe you heard it, Bukhara. Mm -hmm. It's a, one of the famous carpets from that region. Mm -hmm. It's a, because of colors and because of they have a specific patterns, on patterns. Mm -hmm. It's like our Anatolian patterns. Mm -hmm. So these carpets, it's come from most of them, that region. Mm -hmm. So how some of them straightly come from Afghani or Turkmens, some of them, they was immigrated long time ago, 30 years, 40 years ago to Turkey. So because of something, politic problems, mm -hmm. something other problems. <coughs> so still they have a own traditional life. So still they weave in carpets in Turkey. Mm -hmm. some, but doing it their way. Some northeast from the Turkey. The name of the town is from Tokat. Or on the south, it's a border of Syria, which is Hatay. 
it's very famous actually last couple of months because of Syria have a problem. So over there they have a own town. So all Afghani families, mm. they have a special own life, mm. very traditional life, and still they weaving this kind of carpets in Turkey. But sometimes, of course, people exporting carpets from that region. Mm -hmm. So as we look around the room, though, we said this over here is Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Central Some Asia. Bushak. As you go around, you, you can tell without even looking at them what they are. If, like if somebody, like of course you know you work here. It's your place. <laughs> but for, if another carpet person came in. I tell this pile, it's come from Baluchi. Baluchistan. This is a Baluchi. The patterns are more Anatolian, but techniques are come from and colors from Afghani Turkmens. Interesting. Ah, so yeah. when you come to closer, pile and embroidery together. So it looks more different on the workmanship. Yeah. It looks very different. So with something with these, these are natural dyes. All natural dye. So like, well, how are they making? What are they using to make these different colors? For example, saffron, on this orangey color mm -hmm. made by saffron. The blue is come from indigo, and this beige, which is like a almost yellow, is come from jehri, the name of the the flower plant. Mm -hmm. So it's very similar to flowers, what do you call jasmine. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to that, but it's come from more highest, like uh, over the 2000 meter, meter wow. then you can find that uh, plant. So they get that, they boil it? Yeah. They then... cook it on the big pots. Uh -huh. It's around eight hours between 14 hours. It's quite big pot. Uh -huh. Right. So they boil it to that wool and they're going to be dry it after they wash it with the, if they have snow water, it makes much, much finer, good quality color. Mm. If they don't have, of course, they're going to be washed with the river mm -hmm. or something, tap mm -hmm. water. So where are they, like indigo, saffron, they're, they're not getting that around here, are they? Actually, in Cappadocia, saffron, I don't think so, no more, but it's come from Saffron Bolu. Okay. The name of the town. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's a Western Anatolia. The one of the famous saffron. It's come from the vault. Interesting. Oh. So it's quite expensive uh, things uh -huh. to be found. To be honest, very difficult. Wow. This looks very shiny, maybe from that mm -hmm. angle looks perfect condition mm -hmm. and very nice deep red and dark blue mm -hmm. when you look this angle no way. it's going to be almost black wow so this is not silk which is wool, wool. but the wool it's come from neck wool from the sheep which, which is, is the soft? one of the finest good quality wool has come from the neck so it's never ever when she's in the life, the dead part never going to be dirty. Yeah. So because of that, the finest wool. Interesting. So and the sheep, maybe 300 grams, maybe 400 grams, come from neck wool. So can you imagine how many sheep neck wool on this carpet? Yeah. Wow. So this carpet is going to be available because of that workmanship. Mm -hmm. So of course, when you look the back side. Again, very fine work is like almost hurricane. Wow. So this is silk. So because of that much fine work, this is pure wool, but wool is almost silk quality. Wow. So it's feeling very soft. When you compare to other wool. carpets. The both of them wool, but of course different quality wool. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the, another material, again, carpets. Something like this one, which is something medium quality silk. Made by pure silk. 
It's come from Kayseri, hmm. the just 60, 70 kilometers far from to Cappadocia. Mm -hmm. It's quite nice carpet, but we have much, much finer one, which wow. has come from Hereke, the one of the best silk carpets production town. In Anadolu? Yes. It's very close to Istanbul. This is Hereke. So you can see the difference, even you are not really close to carpet. That's really cool. Can That's you turn it one more time? One more time. It's a magic carpet, people call it. No way. Now it's pink. <laughs> oh my goodness. People call flying carpet for these ones. <laughs> Turn it around, it's red. No way. Hard to bend. Yeah. When you try to compare it, this Hereke Very soft. and Kayseri, and look when you're touching both of them, this makes much cooler than this one. Yeah. This is pure silk. It's a hand spindling silk. On this one, which is Kayseri, the silk, what they use, it's come from the machine. Interesting. So it's not hand spindling. Yeah. Still silk, but it's not the same quality. You can see how many more nuts. Even the workmanship, the number of nuts. When you make them much tighter, it was that time much thinner. Oh. So it makes more softer. So this is less work. So, of course, because of that, the price is going to be sometimes really big difference. Sometimes three times, four three times, times really? five times. Wow. For example, something like this one, about, I can tell the prices approximately. Where is the size writing? Like something like this one, 2.20 square meters. So it makes around 8,000 American dollars, approximately. Something very similar size, mm -hmm. this one going to be 1,800 to 2,000 American dollars. Wow. So four times going to be different. Even though they're silk carpets. But it looks maybe very similar. Mm -hmm. People are using time. Yeah. Why not? This is also looks carpet. Sometimes people say they interested this carpet more. Why? Because of the more reasonable. Uh -huh. But on the future, this carpet going to be more available, maybe five times mm -hmm, mm -hmm. than this one. So it's an investment. So this is investment for mm -hmm. us. This is just carpet for use. Yep. Now also future, silk. Um, I've heard, like over time, as you use it more, it it gets stronger, it gets nicer. It is. This is just new silk. Nobody used it before. Mm -hmm. So this is just beginning. Mm -hmm. When is the 20 years after? This carpet is going to be totally changing. Even looks, even quality. Interesting. Even feeling. Yeah. But this one, still it's going to be available because of handmade. Mm -hmm. Still art, but not as like Hereke. Yeah. Hereke have a, some name. American cars. Yes. Mustang, yeah. for example. There you go. Mm -hmm. 65 is my yep. dream. <laughs> <laughs> if someone have a 65 Mustang, you would I would like carpet? to be involved with this carpet. <laughs> this one is if you have a long corridors or runners, maybe you interested this size. Yep. So this kind of carpets, we have a every size. Mm -hmm. It's starting from half square meters between 20 square meters. Wow. Are these new production? or? These are new. But sometimes we have uh, old ones. Which is, I like to show one old. So this is something professional, 
who make this carpet. She made a master degree with this carpet. Hmm. So you can see the how many detail. So you can calculate the borders. So these are all experience. Yeah. If she have a lots of experience. So then on this wall over here, what what it just in general? These that's are most of them from again Anatolian uh -huh. old carpets. Anatolian old wool carpets. Old wool. So uh -huh. over the fifty years, sixty years. Okay. Between hundred fifty years, we have a old antique carpets. And then you have that part of silk on the corners, silk and silk carpets. Mm -hmm. This is handmade, <coughs> but the symmetry is almost perfect. Perfect. Never perfect. So that's another history. What we believing. Only God doing perfect. They have to put some small mistake. It's because of believing. Wow. God making perfect. But unlike uh, whatever, just a normal souvenir shop or something, mm -hmm. what, what they're buying here is a part of the history a part of the culture. It is. It's not just a carpet, it's a piece of art that represents exactly. so much. Yeah, to be honest, we are not selling only carpets. In the carpets, we sell in our history, mm -hmm. we sell in our culture. And we selling behind of the dead carpet have some history. Mm -hmm. Who made it? A story How to tell. We have a like a some experience to we can read What's the background on the dead carpet? Mm -hmm. So we're selling that history with the dead carpet. So in some ways, uh, it's like the good ones, the, mm -hmm. the quality carpets, yeah. each one of them has like sort of tells its own story. Of course. I mean, there's a lot to it. Reading that, Actually, you can say this woman probably was about to get married or this woman, only that kind of thing. You can read this village that uh, patterns, most of them old carpets, mm -hmm. which is new carpets. For example, this one. Mm -hmm. Or the silk one. This kind of carpet have a not really history on the backside because right. she made for business. She work it's like a fabric, mm -hmm. a factory. Something she get money per month for weaving. Right. And same things for this wool carpet. Uh -huh. But something like that old Konya. Uh -huh. She never ever thinking to sell when she weaving time. She mm -hmm. made for herself something investment, or she gonna make a, that carpet for her husband for praying top of the that carpet. Uh -huh. She never thinking to make a business right. because fifty years ago, sixty years ago in Turkey, the ladies have a not really chance to make a business. Right, we're expecting They are tourism. always they are always in the homework. The lady is looking the children's if they have an animal on the in the house in the farm they are checking controls whatever to animals sheep or horse whatever cows she don't have a chance to calculating something money mm -hmm. it was that time no material so only men's they are have work no fabric in this area 50 years ago no chance to talk with the tourists, no tourists. So they are just running something very common work in the village, very, very clear life. But right now, last 25, 30 years, when it's getting more popular, this area, then this kind of carpet is going to be more, to be honest, valuable. Mm -hmm. Because in European Valuable. countries mm -hmm. or other overseas countries, not much this kind of workmanship. Right. So we're selling not only carpet, we're selling our culture. So because of that, sometimes price is going. And with that, we're back where we started. And you have everything you need to make a good decision on a Turkish carpet purchase. You know about looking for price and age and color and material and size and region and type and design and whether it's handmade and that you're buying a work of art. With that, make a good purchase and have a great trip. Bye-bye from Captivating Cappadocia. I'm Duke Dillon.